live Saturday, from New York. It's <laughs> Bra- Bears Fast Workshop Char- and Brian. <laughs> Fast Charging with Bear and Brian. Yeah. I'm the Bear. He's the Brian. That is all true. That. Yeah. Fact check true. Except so you- we're not, not from <laughs> New York. And we're not live. We're uh, pre-taped because, uh, you know. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We want to make more shows for you guys. So we're pre-taping some of them so we could uh, put them out at a later time. Things that don't get dated. And things that uh, fit together into tighter themes. So instead of each theme being news, uh, we divide them into what they're actually about. And I think it's more valuable that way. And it certainly makes it easier to go back and find old episodes, uh, which is a thing that is done by absolutely no one. All right. So the, the chat is obviously closed, but if you guys want to chat later, go ahead. Put <laughs> yeah. something down in the comments. But uh, I want to thank everyone who was here for the live show. Nobody. I got nobody on. What about you, Brian? How many I'm, people you got I'm, on? Uh, I'm at zero is what I'm at right now. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm willing to bet I can hold that zero till the end of the show. Do you know there's a new study that finds electric car batteries have surprising lifespan, providing reassurances for buyers. I feel like we have to talk about this once or twice a month because people still don't know. Yes. So let's talk about how lo- what is this surprising lifespan? Yeah, right? Uh, official battery recalls, it's not that. Basically, what it means is that your range doesn't diminish as much as some had feared. And barring a technical failure in the manufacturing or in the case of bolt, e- bolt batteries, the engineering itself, these batteries stick around for a lot longer than people thought. At eight years or 100,000 miles is the official federal government warranty, and they last more than that. Uh, yeah, they and, found that I mean, yeah. some companies such as Rivian go up to 175,000 miles. So uh, these batteries will love you a long time, much like a... Yes? Boy, I want. I wonder if that's going to make it into my show. One point five percent. I can trim it. You're the one going. One point five percent of bat. I know you can't. One point five percent of batteries have been replaced, excluding recalls. So yeah, and it's it's not a real concern. I saw a. Uh, I, I, I do I, actually feel that that's a little bit high. Still, one point five percent of batteries have been replaced, and that's excluding all of the bolt. I still think that number needs to be lower. I think uh, it probably already is. I think that number is counting very first-generation vehicles that were more prone to failure than today's ones. A, yes, I believe it is based on this chart, because it does go back, or one of these charts went back many, many years. So I, I'm hoping that something like that, that gets improved, because I would hate to think that uh, one and a half percent or one to two uh, motors had to be replaced. Uh, that would like strike me motor. as high. Yeah. And that, well, he, that's how I'm yeah. trying to compare it. I know a motor is different than a battery um, and there are electric motors. I would like to see some uh, information I've never seen. How long do these electric motors actually last? Longer. The, yeah. They're so, they're, they're, they have one moving part. Yeah. And electric motors... <laughs> Lasts an extremely long time from everything that I've seen. Uh, it's it's rare that uh, the the motors actually <coughs> fail. They do. Uh, everything can, and it's usually related to something that happened in the production, where it's just going to fail prematurely. But that happens in every uh, type of part that's made. Uh, so motors last extremely long time. The batteries are seem to be the bigger issue. So um, I think this is great that. Uh, you know, more and more stuff like this can come out. Uh, so a couple, just, couple thoughts here. Have you ever had an electric motor on any of your uh, devices, your yard stuff, everything? Have you had an electric motor fail? Yes. I can think of one. And it was probably bad out of the factory. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a DeWalt drill, electric drill. And it lasted about a week. And then it started smoking. And, uh, you know, that's just a, probably a factory defect and it happened right away. But once they're going, they seem to just go forever. I've got drills 
that I put a lot of pressure on and I've had them for 10 years and all with electric motors. My cousin bought a palm sander and within a week it was dead and he brought it back and they just gave him another one. And within a week that one was dead and he brought it back and the third one didn't die. But by then he was done sanding his log cabin. (laughs) He was running this thing 10 hours a day. Wow. Yeah. Just to death. Uh, I was talking with someone, a circus employee, I think, uh, on Twitter, who was saying, I don't want to... Well, they were such a clown, I can only assume. Uh, they were saying that I wouldn't want... I wouldn't want to buy a car. I'm going to cut that out of my show. Car. <laughs> I don't think you will. I wouldn't buy an electric car because the, the battery will fail on year nine and on mile 101,000. And it's like, you are those... How do you drive with those big floppy shoes i do not know yeah that's um you know that's right after you hear the guy say like "Ah, i get new vehicles every three years but worried about what's going to happen on year nine (laughs) right uh, 101,000 right uh did you know that uh the uh mansion is threatening to sue the u.s treasury over the ev tax credit rules so what's going on here is mansion is a big friend to fossil fuel. Uh, There's a lot of confusion and ambiguity about what is and isn't allowed under these new EV incentives. And they're, they got to get it sorted out and they got to do it quick because buyers need certainty. And we need to figure out if these are, if anything is going to qualify under these new, more strict regulations. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have a problem with them threatening to sue because they need something to motivate them to get their act together on these guidelines. Because not only have they changed numerous times, uh, they should have been set in place long before this was ever passed. Right. You, you right. Know, they've, and been, they've been talking about this for years. And to not know how to do it, once once they finally get an opportunity to pass it, it makes it kind of into a, a bit of a CF, if you know what I mean. It's a real head scratcher. Why? We're a a third of the way through the year, almost, and we don't know what the rules are yet. It makes no sense. And I generally am not a fan of lawsuits, but if you have to, you have to. And maybe that's what happens. Yes. Do you know that uh, by 2026, Europe will have an EV charging station every 37 miles? Is that literal or is that just like saying how many charging stations divided by how many miles they have? Well, it looks like it's it might be actual because they will also have special stations at 77 mile intervals. So it looks like it's an actual kind of set in stone deal. The end result. Yeah. uh, These these don't look like fast chargers, by the way. No, that's a stock photo. Yeah. I was going to say those are destination. But yeah, those. Those do not look like fast chargers at all. Yeah, no. And the question is, I've asked this question before when we've seen articles about charging stations. I want to know what speed they are. <laughs> right. <clears throat> you know, Kyle from Out of Spec Motoring has a new app, Rate My Charger or something like that, where not only do you get some really great information on what each charger is, but you get to see... Uh, ratings if you if you find a one-star location where it's broken all the time don't go the eu the eu has ambitious plans to ensure 90 percent of heavy duty vehicles are zero emission by 2040 Hmm. <laughs> is this in the uh, same article somewhere yep very last sentence there okay i think yep you, you know and, you know what I, you know what i'd like to see on charging stations this is a, a little off topic but We've got all the go- these governments uh, pushing to put out um, charging stations. What would really be nice is, one, uh, some sort of central app, not even a, a rate my app, but something that's real, uh, something, uh, an app that shows all public charges no matter where they are. Um, a requirement, basically, that they get registered somewhere so you can find these chargers. Two, on every charging station, um, you have basically what you find on the box of cereal. Uh, you on the box of cereal, you'll see a list of ingredients, and it gives you the breakdown. So, how about a breakdown of what this charging station is capable of? Um, this would help a lot of newbies 
uh, people who are just getting either renting an electric car, have never driven one, they borrowed from somebody, uh, just for because the world still needs educate, educated, especially on how to charge and when to charge and how long it's going to take to charge. Uh, so basically, a uh, breakdown saying this charging station will take an average car or a 300 mile range car X amount of time, approximately between 45 to 60 minutes or on a level one charger, uh, you will need to park this car here for about 48 hours to get a complete charge. Do you really want to be here? Um, because I, I have had people sitting at these charging stations uh, for days. I have seen it not not knowing that they've left the cars there going, well, I didn't know where else to go. Is it, they, it is such a, a mess of charging stations. They're, they're all over the place. You can find them with certain apps. Um, you can find some of them with certain apps and then you find others with other apps. But yeah. nothing is. I mean, Tesla's got it set up pretty good, where you you can go to a, you can put it into the Tesla and go. Uh, I need to stop at this charging station, or the car tells you, "Hey, you need to stop here because you're going to run out of charge." And when you stop here, you need to be here for 23 minutes uh, to be able to continue your trip. And then you can always decide to stay there longer. So those questions are answered uh, through the through Tesla. And I, I'm not trying to like boost up Tesla again. But yes, their charging station stuff is phenomenal compared to every other piece of crap out there. Uh, and it explains everything. But I've had people take Teslas to the four kilowatt chargers, uh, three, three kilowatt chargers. In. It says See, it's going to take 24 hours to finish. Yeah, it's good. But, you know, there are companies that can do charging in minutes. Are Chinese they charging? EV maker, <laughs> Chinese EV maker Neo aims to woo more buyers with a thousand new battery swap stations as it prepares for launch of budget cars. Of launch, if I had a battery that could be swapped out like that, I would probably launch that car a lot because yeah. once it once I bust it, um, either from t going airborne or just beat the crap out of that battery because that's what you're doing, um, I would just go get another one. Yeah. And let you and let you get the one I'm. Let, I've let just them, destroyed. The next guy's gonna have to deal with it. It's uh, not. I still think it's a terrible idea for many many reasons. The biggest one is, do you really have enough spare batteries that you don't need to put in cars? If they needed to have, and just the logistics of holiday weekends, how many spares do you keep around for the holidays? Because you're either going to have 90% of them sitting all the time unused, just so you have almost enough for the big travel weekends, or you're just not going to have... A, it's a terrible idea. It's a terrible yeah, idea. This building itself, if this is the complete <coughs> structure, I can't see them having that many batteries um, available. And I, I assume that they're all... Any ones that would be in there would be get, getting recharged, and it would probably take 45 minutes for each one, um, give or take. I just see a, a lot behind that. And gosh, uh, there, there's just so many possibilities of things that go wrong on this. So yeah. many. Yeah. Uh, besides the fact that I would beat the crap out of that battery just because it, it's like, like a rental car. Don't ever yeah. do that to run a car, by the way. But it's not yours. It's not your property anymore. Yeah. And, and pe people treat things differently. The people who had unlimited supercharging for life, uh, while those cars were under warranty, would abuse the batteries. I mean, all the way to 100 every time, down to 4 or 5% every time. They'd come in just on the last lingering electrons before charging it back up. Because they were using them for commercial purposes, for mm -hmm. ride sharing and whatnot. Yeah, and I also don't think this is something that um, Americans are going to get uh, too into. This is kind of not their thing, swapping out things like this. Uh, it's not a propane tank. Uh, you know, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing, we'll, and I think we're going to talk about... Uh, do we have VinFast on this list somewhere? Not today. 
not okay. today. But what we do have is, you know, why don't why don't Chinese buyers just keep buying gas cars? Well, Legacy Auto faces disaster in China with unsellable cars. There are lots and lots, and I don't mean bunches and bunches, though I do mean that too. I mean entire lots full of cars that they just can't sell. And why is that? Because the transition to clean energy is already underway, and these are not clean cars. And people don't want them, and... In a number of years, they won't even be able to keep them on the road legally. Are they going to tell people in China that you can't drive a specific car anymore? Or are they just not going to let them register them? How, how is that going to work? So already in many major cities like Shanghai and Beijing, there are uh, restrictions on driving, uh, on getting a registration tag for your vehicle at all. Um if you want to get a registration tag, you can get in line and hope for the best, or you can get an EV and you can just get one today. So it's a little bit of carrot uh, and a whole lot of stick. And that that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't yeah. they just ban the sale of these cars? They um, will. Right, but if you're if you're not going to let them register it to drive in in Shanghai, Shanghai is a city though, isn't it? Yes, but it's uh, a city, uh, it's a, a very sprawling city. Geographically, it is massive, massive. It's like the size of several counties in a lot of states. Uh, okay. Because they just keep pushing what is Shanghai. So it is, you can drive for an hour with no traffic and still be in Shanghai. So. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is definitely um, a little bit of arm behind the back, making people do things whether they like it or not. They they should really, though, do something about these cars because uh, there's got to be a little bit of mismanagement on the auto manufacturers if they're sending these cars to, to be sold in areas that they can't be driven. So I just looked it up. Uh, Dallas is 385 square miles. Uh, Shanghai is 2,448 square miles. A little bit bigger then, huh? It is slightly larger uh, because you don't put it to a vote when you annex additional land into the city. You just do it. You it's just it, do it. It's just China. Yeah. So that's always good and fun. And yeah, do you know that uh, some good news on the recycling front? Inexpensive. Oh, read, read this headline for me. Inexpensive and environmentally friendly mechanochemical recycling process recovers 70% of lithium from batteries. Now say it again. Nah. The idea is, and people look at this, 70%. I thought we were already up over 90%. Yes, we are. But this does it in a very simple, clean, sustainable way. And it would not be, you know, the only method used, but it'd be a cheap and easy one to still get most of your lithium back. That is uh, good news. Again, uh, I think as time goes on, we're going to keep seeing uh, things like this get better and improve and make it easier to recover the resources that are put in there. But then on the same on the other hand, not the same hand, but on the other hand, you're probably going to find that we're not going to be using lithium as much as time goes on. I, the... I, I firmly believe you're right. If the sodium batteries work, which it looks like they may have got them to a point where they can commercially scale them, I think those are going to be used in some vehicles, but mostly those will be pushed over to stationary storage where, where energy density is not as critical. The LFPs that are currently used in stationary will go into vehicles and the transition will just keep moving one step up the ladder until we are done with, with, you know, the lithium, lithium and the, and the conflict metals like cobalt um, and LFP yeah. again, doesn't even use cobalt. So, right. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's like uh, you're going to sodium We're we're fixing one problem, but we're creating another one. Because we are taking steps backwards on the range of these batteries, or of sodium batteries, are supposed to be less than the lithium batteries. Just like the LFPs were less than lithium, 
So yeah, we're we're, the, we're take, taking some steps backwards on that, and we, I think one of the big things that's going to make this uh, batteries uh, acceptable worldwide for every community is to be able to go on long range drives and be able to tow. Um, mm-hmm. Those are some of the big things, and then you're going to have and the next the next real problem is being able to recharge in a quick and timely manner meaning five to ten minutes uh, i think the fact that recycling these materials is probably in the short term not as important as oh my god what's he doing oh my god he's drinking he, uh, yeah i got a drinking problem ah, my right. tongue's orange that's funny i think i think you just lo- lost your chip because i know what was in there <laughs> yeah yeah anyway that, that's my opinion of it uh to make the battery the battery situation better um is fix those problems the recycling uh it might save some cost uh because of less uh mining for lithium and some of the other minerals but i don't think it is as important and going to sodium batteries is taking a step backwards on these other things that are probably more important for the widespread adoption of electric vehicles but it just allows more options and for Drivers who don't need to tow, who don't need 500 miles of range. And I'm sure that just like lithium batteries, the sodium ones will continue gradual improvement over time. And this is great. The more types of batteries you have, the more diverse the market, the more opportunities you have to avoid bottlenecks in particular places. Lithium is not particularly uncommon. It's just, just got to get it. It's got to do it. So it's not like we're going to run out of lithium. That's not the concern. Um, and as more demand uh, rises, the known reserves continue to expand because people are actually looking for it now where before they weren't because it was such a cheap material. Who needs it? And we've already got enough. Yeah, so that's, I, think it, yeah. I think it's pretty clear that no matter what, lithium is probably going to be easier to get out of the ground than oil. Uh, yes, yes. The dirtiest lithium mine is still better than the cleanest oil spill. <sighs> Do you know that for the first time, renewable energy generation beat out coal in the U.S. I think coal's gonna fight back. Go coal! You can you can make a comeback. Yeah. Last year, renewable energy generation surpassed coal for the first time, which is not but, surprising. Right. Yeah, but remember, the experts say, don't celebrate just yet. Why? Why do they say that? I don't know, because it was up in the headline. That's why they said it. The growth in renewable was largely driven by a surge in added wind and solar. Uh, The concern is those are intermittent power sources. And I've done videos explaining why they're not as intermittent as you might think. Why Why do they keep for putting half the equation in there? Because you you have yes they are intermittent, but if you attach them to a battery, that will fill in those gaps, and that's what Tesla Energy is trying to do, and other companies also would like to be part of that. Just make make it well. You need more lithium, I guess, right? Or, or maybe uh, well, <clears throat> yes. And the the closing paragraph says it doesn't matter how cheap the energy is if developers can't get through the interconnection process quickly enough and get enough steel in the ground we won't hit our climate change goals. So there is permitting delays there's transmission lines that need to be built. But the thing with especially solar is you can move it closer to where it's being used which can make long ter- long distance transmission lines less critical to the equation. And I agree, permitting needs to be improved, especially for mines, but also for power lines, also for all of this stuff. But, yeah, and you've driven through Texas. Did you see any wind farms? I believe I did. Did you see, how, if you had to guess how many wind turbines you saw, thousands? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just on our drive from Austin to Brownsville, we saw... Uh, countless countless easily in the hundreds but i don't know how many they were just everywhere as far as the eye could see and at night it really popped because you could see all the red lights on them warning of uh 
Air, air yeah, there's a, there's a place on the way to Vegas where the, uh, you see the same thing at night. It's just it's like the hills have eyes, and you just see these red glowing things uh, out in the mountains. Uh, but also, I think what is it, Palm Springs uh, in California? Have you ever, you ever driven from I've, there on the I ten? Ha- I, I have. I've driven from L.A. to Palm Springs to Vegas. Yeah, I think there's like four million uh, windmills uh, turbines out there. I I remember going through there almost 30 years ago when I was like four years old and, um, and, <laughs> and, and they had wind turbines out there then. And I hadn't gone through there for like, like 10 or 20 years. And I go back, I'm like, Oh my God. It's like they were taken over by the, the tripod things from world of worlds. They were just everywhere. And then you yeah. had like the, Oh, the old puny ones. And then you had these great big ones that were, you know, 15 stories tall, just towering over the little ones. The, the older the older generation the port here in town uh, gets regular shipments of turbine blades and they are a sight to see oh yeah the it's a it's a big deal to have to move them the, it's, it's you almost wonder if like uh, sort of like what, what they what they do at some of these factories instead of having parts and things shipped in just build the part there and make a mobile uh a mobile hmm. turbine factory. Well, especially if you're going to be putting in all those blades in one place, might it be cheaper to temporarily build a factory the way they put up concrete batch plants on big construction sites? And that's a, hmm. that's an excellent comparison because that's what they hmm. do. They they build like these little mini factories for the batch plants so that because the trucks can't drive as far as they need to without the concrete curing, so they they just make these portable batch plants. And we saw at uh, Tesla, Tesla, Texas Tesla's Gigafactory, uh, where they're creating the pipes on site instead of oh, uh, remember the drainage right. pipes? Yeah, yeah, that's right. They would just have a roll of that. coil and just make the pipes right there. I was like, is that how that's done? And that's I... all it takes to make them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and they could make an entire pipe in what seemed like what ten minutes? Yeah, and, minutes. And, yeah, and, and then just move on to the next one. And these are four foot diameter pipes. Uh, yeah. I know that it's not easy to build a, a turbine blade and there are right. some exact specifications, but yeah. if, if, I don't know, if you get an order big enough, it seems like you could drop the cost a whole lot. I just, I, up a, little, I, a mobile I wonder how, how keen those high skilled workers would be to relocate every five years. But I don't know. It's an it, interesting idea. We should look into that. Mm. Uh, I might need a quarter of a billion dollars to start my latest venture. I meant uh, look into it for the sake of making a video, telling oh. other people to oh. do it, not I doing it ourselves. I thought you wanted to like, be in a partnership <clears throat> create with turbine blades. All right, I forget it. Yeah, Deal. yeah. Deal I off. didn't want to anyway. Yeah. I was thinking oh. about somebody better. <laughs> so, you know, big thanks to my patrons who get early access, all that good stuff. Keep this channel running. You guys are... Either the best or the second best. Who do you think is the best? Well, it's probably going to go down to my viewers or your viewers. I think mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be either I'm going to get one and you're going to get two, or you're going to get one and I'm going to get two. So Yeah. Yeah. So And uh, we do this every Tuesday and also now. Tuesdays at 4, Wednesdays at noon, Pacific, I guess is our, uh, it's our, new, is our new jam. So yeah. thank you all for hanging out. Thank you, Bear, for hanging out. Well, thank you, Brian. It's been a blast, a pleasure. Uh, I've learned a lot from you in these last 28, not 29 minutes. And, uh, well, I've learned more than I probably learned in the previous 30 minutes. So I will say that. So thank you for that. Yeah, you are I, absolutely welcome. Yes. You, so. Yes, of course. I've made you smarter, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. See you guys next week. All right. Bye. I got to go, go sniff some glue or something. Bye.